of all views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily represent those of NCTV, its officers and volunteers, or Cox Cable or Frontier Communications, their employees, or the town of Newington, its elected officials or employees. The producer of this program is solely responsible for its content. This particular is a little bit off this month for March because we had some different uh, uh, conflicting things going on for the first Monday. So this is technically the second Monday of March, the uh, 12th of March. And if you watch right now and it's a little bit after 8 o'clock, again, we had some other uh, things going on. We had a Youth Adult Council meeting tonight and we're going to be talking to some of the folks from the Youth Adult Council in just a little bit. But because that meeting goes from 7 to 8, the folks here at Channel 14 were kind enough to change the entire schedule over here to 8 o'clock. So uh, that's why it is. So if it's a little bit after 8 o'clock, yeah, it's almost quarter after 8. Um, and you're watching us live on NCTV 14. You can call in and what they will do is pass your questions along to us. Uh, Vicki Rosencrantz, part of the amazing Rosencrantz clan, will be uh, watching over the phones and you can ask her any uh, question and she'll pass the questions along to us. All right, makes sense to you? Makes sense to me. Mr. Mayor, how are you? Mr. Parker, always a pleasure always to be here. Always a pleasure. Isn't it great that we finally made it into March and we have another snowstorm coming? Oh, we do. We this do. sucker's I, a real I, lion. I, I, I was just looking at... Uh Whatever source is saying, there's, they're saying about 6 to 12 for our area. They're really? saying it's going to go all through tomorrow, starting tonight, go into tomorrow through the day, into the evening. Now, is this the latest update from this? This is the latest I got from Eversource. Um, Holy cow. So, uh, yeah, starting March 12th, 10 p.m. Okay, okay. No, 8 p.m. No. Should already Today said, no, it's not going to start till later, is it? Well, who knows? Oh, it's Eversource, right? It's Eversource. Your we'll source is Eversource. Out. They're saying snow will continue Tuesday through Wednesday night, moderate to heavy snow. Ew, that's awful. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's awful. One this thing, is... one thing let's, let's remind people of this before we get distracted, and we'll remind them again at the yep. end of the show. Clear your fire hydrant. Fire hydrant. Yep. I'm getting a message on the screen. It says, is Newington Town Council meeting canceled to, for tomorrow? In all likelihood, no. Uh, one of the reasons is we have the public hearing for the budget. That's something governed by the charter requiring published notice in advance. If we cancel that reschedule, we've got to do uh, re-advertising. And uh, it, it, it just gets to be complicated. What if the public can't get here? Well, the council can be there and they can watch on Channel 14 and call in. All right, good, good, good. Assuming Channel 14 can get through. Are you Pardon kidding me, me my MCTV, guys? I'm, I'm old-fashioned. I'm a neo-Luddite. I still call it Channel 14. Well, I, technically, I, we still use that. And I, I should point out, too, the big news for the council meeting is the uh, naming of the volunteer of the year. Mm-hmm. You know who that is? I heard rumors, but why don't you tell us? I'll, I'll tell you. It's actually a matter of public record that is? Uh, NCTV is the 2018 Volunteer of the Year. Boy. And it's a well-deserved honor. And well I especially, deserved. especially that crew, the crew over here That's and the right. endless hours they do That's making right. sure that all the town stuff gets out there. I mean, right. I'm window dressing, you know? So am I. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but, you know. 
But they, they you know, to stand there at those I'd meetings. Been uh, born rich instead of beautiful, you know. <laughs> what are you gonna do, you know? But it is. Uh, I think, um, and I say it's well deserved, and not on. Believe me, not on on my behalf, but on the the folks that are the volunteers here. And for years, thank you so much. They've been doing all the work behind the scenes. The reason that you can see um, planning and zoning and board of ed and town council and so many other things that happen here in town. The parades, um, everything. I mean, if you're seeing it on channel uh, NCTV 14 or any of the other multiple channels that we're on, it's because of volunteers and that do so much work mm -hmm. behind the scenes. And, uh, and actually, uh, we should probably run our credits at the end of the program. Even our volunteers tonight, which I will say, Robert Blank, Robert J. Blank, Michael Delgado, Joe Trombetta, Vicki Rosencrantz, John Donahue, and Abigail Parker. No relief. I don't think. Maybe mm -hmm. is she somewhere else? Oh, that's Abby. Yeah. Hey, Abby. They used your formal name. Mm -hmm. She's our West Island Terrier, the that's official right. man, Abigail Parker. That's I right. fell for it. Oh, oh boy. Good girl, Abby. Yeah, yeah, you're volunteer today. But seriously, everybody uh, everybody behind the scenes, uh, incredible. And of course, uh, a lot of it couldn't get done without Patty Foley. Uh, Patty's always back there producing and putting programs together like this one, so we want to thank Patty. Mm -hmm. And I know she had a lot to do with leading the charge to, to help us get recognized, and that really means a That's lot. That's right, and uh, it's well deserved. We're yeah, not on the air right now, but I'm excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> Well no, it deserved. really is. It really well deserved. is. Uh, well deserved. Well, thank you. It was nice to know that you were in our corner on that Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Good, 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 good. So, so, uh, so now uh, now that we've got the weather covered and all the great updates, uh, you've brought a couple of guests along with yes, you tonight? Yes, I did. I brought from the town's human service. Which camera? It's hard. Why don't we have a monitor? Right there. Yeah, I know. But why don't we have a monitor showing ourselves? Well, you know, I mean, that's something back in master control. If you guys have a monitor you want to put on for us so we can see ourselves. Yeah, but I've like seen them. this show before. So have I. <laughs> it ends the same way. Yeah, so one with the one with the red towel. I right know, over the there. one with the red dot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got uh, with us today uh, Carol Lebrecht, who's Director of Human Services. Yep, yep. And Rick Huggard, who's the Youth Program Coordinator. And they are here for a couple of reasons. A lot of stuff going on. One is uh, you've got an upcoming program on opioids, which is a growing problem throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, much better news, we have Hoopla coming up. That's right. Let's mm -hmm. talk about Hoopla. That's fun. Oh, oh, oh. That put me on the spot. Uh, I just came out right, of the meeting, sure, actually. Make sure camera people, you get, you get, you get Rick. They got him. Go ahead. All right. They got him. All right. Um, so, yes, we just came out of the Youth Adult Council meeting to wrap up our final plans for uh, Hoopla 2018. It is a wonderful fundraising event. Uh, that is inclusive of all the fourth through eighth grade students in uh, Newington who would like to participate. It's a, for lack of a better way of describing it, it's a round robin basketball <coughs> scoring. Short teams, short bursts of uh, energy, um, scoring as many points as they can in a given amount of time. And uh, throughout the evening uh, on March 29th from March 20. 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, they'll do their best. There'll be some trophies out there. We, all the money goes toward uh, the Youth Adult Council and a scholarship fund uh, for uh, high school students. And that's one of our biggest fundraising events of the year. And you mentioned the location, I believe? Uh, Newington High School. Yes. Newington High now School. In the, gym, uh, the gymnasium at Newington High School. And then what's the date of it? March 29th. Okay. 5 then... p.m. until 10, roughly, depending on the, the number of teams. Uh, um, so sometimes it can end at... 9.30, mm -hmm. um, sometimes it can end at 10 o'clock, depends they, on how long-winded the, uh, the awards are. And the Kiara basketball tournament, uh, the Kiara McDermott basketball tournament is also yeah. in March, so I think yes, that's coming up. 23rd, I believe. Yeah, yeah the week before, yeah. so that, that's, a, that's another great one. But, uh, you know, for, for people who don't know, I mean, um, why don't you just talk a little bit, uh, Carol, about what you and Rick do uh, for the youth here in Newington. I mean, with human services and, of course, uh, you know, Rick has got the, the program coordinator. And of course, you're involved with the challenge course and so many things. Why don't you give people a little bit of an update of what happens with between you two? Great. Um, well, human services deals with... Um services to from birth to elderly yep. we do financial casework coordination so we assist people 
um, doing assessments on what their financial situation is. Are there resources out there that would be helpful to them? Can we help them apply for SNAP? Can we help them apply for Social Security? We work with a lot of the folks that are retiring in town and help them choose their Medicare plans. Um, so we work with all uh, phases of financial casework, medical insurance, housing, energy assistance is big right now. Um, so we do the full scope of that. And then we have a youth and family counseling component. Uh, Pat Meskel is our clinical coordinator, coordinator and we do counseling um, for uh, youth and their families. We get referrals from police, from the schools, um, from families themselves, and we deal, deal with issues um, that, that teens are struggling with. Mm -hmm. And then we have Rick's whole portion of the program, which is our, our youth programming and adventure-based and does positive cool youth development. Stuff. He, yes. he does, and mm -hmm. you know, he, you he gets job. to have fun. fun mm -hmm. um, so Rick's here, so he can speak on his behalf of, of his youth programming. Well, I can say for uh, for me in my career, um, this is a dream job. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, um, getting to plan a lot of great activities and, uh, and events for uh, the young people in Newington, mostly middle school and high school age, and uh, a tremendous support base between uh, families, the schools, and the and the town. Uh, we do everything from outdoor adventure. We have a, a great challenge course that's uh, over adjacent to the uh, the town property. Uh, the building and uh, not the building, the highway department, and um, we do all we have zip line. We've got all kinds of high elements, low elements. We have something called a yurt. No what? A yurt. A yurt. Um, which is also called a gers. Um, it is a large circular tent with a cone top, and um, it's something so that we are able to now have programming all year. Yeah. It's an insulated. Uh, um, structure with a wood stove, and so we're able to. Uh, we we've done snowshoeing out there. We um, we actually just last week opened up the challenge course. We had Martin Kellogg and John Wallace Middle School's fifth grade uh, health and wellness classes out, mm -hmm. and we uh, were able to stay outside on the ropes course. And uh, in between uh, frozen hands and feet, we'd get them inside, get them warmed up with some hot chocolate and a nice uh, wood stove and then get them back outside climbing, and they had a, a wonderful time. And then we also just have some great fun stuff, taking the kids bowling, um, movies, or uh, you know, mini golf and go-karts. But our primary um, purpose is to get, get everybody active, get them moving, get them active, interacting with each other, healthy social interaction. And um, basically, anybody can do it, whether you've done it before or not. Our whole philosophy is that uh, you know, anyone can do it if they want. And you know it's interesting because I have not. Um, I remember that that's that's been in town here for many many years. Yes. Now, right? How many the ballpark? Yeah. How many years when we first started? Oh, uh, that started yeah. as yeah, the ropes the, course. Probably twenty nine. Yeah. Oh, the youth services actually started in the seventies, yeah. late late yep. seventies. But I mean, when did they build that that course? The challenge course was actually we have our uh, a big anniversary coming up. Nineteen ninety eight was the official opening. Wow. Yep, of the that. challenge course, yeah. Um, yeah. and so we it took a couple of years of the planning years. and then the construction. Yeah. Uh, Ken Friedenberg um, was very um, uh, big in that and it really helped a lot. He was a former director of uh, youth service, uh, yeah. human yeah. services. Yeah. Yeah. And, and youth um, service. he started in youth and started services. the youth mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then he grew and, um, <laughs> and we've we have we've all grown up in this. It's a wonderful <laughs> challenge course, and we've got a great reputation, and um, pretty much. Every young person in town gets to go through our challenge course at mm -hmm. some point in their school, uh, you know, years. And if they would like to come back and do either after-school programming or summer stuff with us, um, that's also available. But what's nice is that we're connected into the the uh, middle school health and wellness curriculum, so they all get to, you know, a shot. Wait, I do tell it. you something. It would really be neat, Rick, if we could have some of this stuff over there. Maybe. Um, that we could shoot some video on. And I would love it. I would absolutely love it. Yeah, maybe we do it. a couple of GoPros out there and um, yeah. put stuff here on Channel 14. would be neat. Cause I'm not getting on the zip line, I'm telling oh, you. Oh, come that. on, Roy. Oh, come on. That's come the on. last time. Don't you remember? I, 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 I will it's, if you will. It's that challenge sound? by choice. All of our activities <laughs> That's are That's what everything that we choice. do here at Channel 14 <laughs> is challenge <laughs> by choice. I would love to have a GoPro going off that zip oh, tower. It's about a 40-foot tower. And um, it's about a 300-foot-long zip. There you go. And it's oh. uh, it's exhilarating. It's very exhilarating. I still I've been doing it for years, and I still get tingles and 
And an adrenaline rush going off that zip tower. Yeah, I think uh, John Donahue would be really good at that. He's one of our guys back there. John is, uh, John could do that. So, so there's so many different things out there. If people want to find out, is there is there some way they can go online to find out more about this about this particular challenge course, or you know, do you ever do you ever make it available to anyone like? Um, would could we do team building over there for businesses? Absolutely, or? we um, we do host a lot of outside groups, which is a, a wonderful way for us to also be able to mm. get more interest yep. and to um, be able to uh, get just more exposure. The website um, for the town is we're under you know our portion of it is under construction still. We're just finding ways to be able to get more of that information out there with this new platform that we have. Something more interesting than just clicking on a link and getting a document. So we're we're putting together some photo uh, montages and some other information. But um, you know the best way too is to call me, mm -hmm. Rick Huggard at uh, Newington Human Services. Uh, can I pump my phone number? In oh, there? Good, good. Go ahead. Eight six zero six six five eight five nine four, and I'm I'm happy to talk to anybody at any time with uh, questions or information, especially parents who would like to uh, maybe have their kids participate. Yeah. And a little What's bit the age range? Uh, we from um, fourth grade on through to high school. Um, we do younger aged programs, but we don't put them on the high ropes until they're a little bit bigger in physical stature mm -hmm. um, but we progress them up and so we do lots of ground activities uh, which can be actually sometimes more fun because there's a lot more running around and you know having a good time um, but high ropes were, were pretty much uh, from fifth grade <clears throat> up um, for the high ropes the really high like the zip line you do have to have a little bit of body mass to be able to fly down that zip mm -hmm. so yeah, a little bit old, yeah older kids I got some body mass. I think I'd do that. But they're right. <laughs> we yeah. got that covered. There's, yeah, there's something for, but there's something for everyone, um, even if you are not sure um, that you want to actually do it. Mm -hmm. There's definitely something for everyone. Yeah, we got to win. And then recently we did, uh, Rick came to a department head meeting and led a kind of team building exercise. Really? So, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the, we do things on the challenge course and, you know, we're available to. What did you do over there within, for team building? Have yeah. Adventure oh, Will Travel. Um, exactly. It was a department heads meeting uh -huh. um, back in January, I think it was, correct? Or, I, I know it was cold out. That, yeah. I do remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so we, uh, during the course of the meeting, we started it off with just what we call some icebreakers and then some problem-solving kind of initiatives, but the uh, the baseline is to, you know, think, but also have fun. Yeah. And kind of break out of whatever your think particular... Think outside of the box. Yeah, I, I hate using that word. I yeah. know. <laughs> think outside of your own box. But yeah, yeah right, comfort right. zones is another one that's really... Comfort zone, yeah, boxes. Out of your comfort whole zone. Whole 90 yards, let's just touch base. Yeah. <laughs> and all these things yeah. you can imagine. That's and very trendy. Got yeah. wonderful um, feedback from department heads and from... Uh, uh, from Tanya Lane, the, the town manager was yep. very happy. Yep. Um, was I think when we started to talk about the idea, um, there was you know we weren't sure how it was going to work, and it, it seemed to just be really well received. All right, for those of you who are just uh, tuning in right now, this is the the March program for the uh, talk to the mayor. It's uh, March twelfth of two thousand eighteen. Uh, she thinks you can, we got about uh, about a little before eight thirty or so, and we are live on your community access station NCTV. You could be watching us on numerous different channels depending on if you've got, you know, a, uh, a Dish or if you've got Frontier or if you've got Cox. There's a lot of different ways to watch us, and you can always watch us at nctv.org because we're streaming live, and you may be watching us that way now. But if you do have any questions and you would like to call in, uh, we have uh, Vicki Rosencrantz is on the phones tonight, so if there's a question, you want to pass it along. little tricky when we have multiple guests to have everybody wired in to take the phone calls, so this is something where we'd actually need you to ask a question off the air. It could be a very simple question, and they'll just pass it along to us. Also, I, I do want to uh, take a moment here before um, before the end of the program. I would like to say that uh, we are we're struggling a little bit tonight because we're, uh, we're really running Running, we don't have our the head of our A team here with us, and that's Scott Allo. And I know uh, there's uh, he's going through a very difficult time now. His family's going through some uh, some very uh, some some very sad times right now. So our thoughts and prayers go to Scott and his family. Here. And um, it's it's uh, it's a big hole when Scott isn't here. So our, our thoughts and prayers are, are with him and the family. And hopefully we'll see you back in here real soon because. 
It's scary when you're not here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, um, Carol, could you talk a little bit about what's going on with the with the opioid program and what this is all about and what they're going to be doing and why we need this in Newington? Is it, uh, you know, uh, just give us a, a, an update as far as why we've decided to bring a program like this to town. We had we had the um, we had the so uh, the. the um, social awareness program that we did uh, yep, with uh, Scott Driscoll just a little while back. Yeah. And what's going on with this and why the, uh, why the need here in Newington? So um, I, think, I think the word is out. I think a lot of people are aware that the, the opioid um, crisis is, is spreading and unfortunately it's touching the lives of, of many of us. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was a grant through Capital um, Area Substance Abuse Council, KSAC, and in cooperation with the Ensworth Foundation through CVS mm -hmm. um, to help give towns the, the resources to get this information out to people. Mm -hmm. And what we want is to um, have people learn about prescription drug abuse and how um, people can get caught up into yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, without necessarily even um, realizing it. So mm -hmm. they could have be a, a student athlete, they could have a, incur an injury, mm -hmm. go to the doctor, get prescribed an, a painkiller, pain yeah, yeah. and it's very quick and easy, unfortunately, to, um, to have that need continue then. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to get the information out to youth Mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. so that they know that information um, and we've got a very interesting program um, we have the director of health Charles mm -hmm. Brown is going to speak to us about um, kind of the statistics and the facts mm -hmm. of, of what's going on and then we have two presenters Elise Mady mm -hmm. um, she's 26 she lives in Berlin and she will share with us her personal struggle amazing um, yeah she she got into um, the whole drug use uh, quite innocently yeah. at a party, you know, kind of thought, you know, um, she said, I, I hated the taste of vodka, but it made me feel, it made me feel um, so that I wasn't quite as different as yeah. other people. Mm -hmm. And um, from there it progressed into other, other oh, substances. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she'll share with us her journey into that yeah. and, um, and the fact thank, she survived, she's a miracle. Thank, yeah, yeah. Thank goodness, her mm -hmm. positive journey out mm -hmm. in, into recovery and her successes mm -hmm. now. And then we've got um, Aaron Nazario. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. He is amazing, and he's the founder of the um, Peace Center. Peace Center, mm -hmm. exactly. And he um, he was not a drug user, but his family. He was touched by it in yeah. his family, and um, he shares how that environment in his family and that stress in his family um, made him um, get into a life of, oh. of violence and oh. gangs and, and how negatively it impacted his life. And again, his positive journey into um, this whole peace movement and, and program that he's doing where he's helping young people make positive choices. I know, uh, I, I met him around, I had, I had him on the, uh, the radio with me a couple of times and you know, this whole peace center is amazing in in Hartford and and Iran has been shot multiple times. He's in uh, he's been locked up in jail more times than I can even imagine because we spoke a lot about that um, and the fact that you know he's he um, he's lost family members to violence um, and he's always been the one in the middle and to bring the peace in Hartford and throughout these last few years if there's been like gang violence somebody is even shot and they end up uh, in St Francis Hospital. Uh, Iran is the guy who goes into the middle, talk to the police, talk to the gangs, and um, he's he's talking about peace. Remember back, you know, give peace a chance. Make remember mm -hmm. the peace all train and the saying. peace movement. Yep. Peace that's peace right. Love, man. And yeah. that's what he's all about is trying to get peace awareness out there again too. And uh, and when you and I spoke, and um, and I've I've also interviewed at least before too. Yeah. And you know, again, these are people that. You can't even imagine that this type of stuff is happening right around us. And I know from an opioid standpoint, 
I know people that have lost people. I knew of a, a woman years ago who lived in West Hartford, wonderful family, great husband, children, and we spoke for a while, and she told me how she was uh, got to the point where she was trying to score heroin on the back streets in New Britain, and heroin is not what you may picture uh, of a guy in a gutter with a tube in his arm and a needle, and it's not like that anymore. They make it very um, easy for you to uh, ingest. Friendly. Uh, yeah, yeah, very friendly for, for people. And when you do get to a certain point where you can't, um, get relief from pain pills anymore. Um, I think heroin's about three dollars a hit or whatever, um, and that's the scary part because people are trying to kill that pain. So hopefully we'll find out yeah. quite a bit that night. I think and, one thing we have to keep in mind is it's not everybody. it's not an inner city problem not at all. anymore. Not at all. And we've heard Chief Clark say it's here in Newington. Yeah. It really yeah. is, and a very sobering thought to realize. Your neighbor or somebody in the next street over could be an addict. Mm. Very. These very aren't bad somebody. people. No. This is just every, no. It's happening to everybody. Exactly. You know? so, and these are the kind of programs that you guys are trying to bring more of this stuff to town. All right, so what resources do we have? Say, say I suspect or I know my neighbor is an abuser. What can I do? Well, I, I wish there were nice, neat, easy yeah. answers to that. Um, human services is a resource. Um, certainly people mm -hmm. can call us and, and we are going to um, point them in the right direction. Um, it, everybody at the point that they're reaching out is on a different mm -hmm. um, part of their journey. They may or may not be ready to recognize that they have an issue and that, they're, mm -hmm. that they want help. Mm -hmm. um, it may be the family that wants that help for mm -hmm. them a long time before the person using the drugs mm -hmm. is ready for that. So uh, it's a different, a different pathway for each person going through it. Um, but hopefully we would connect them with um, you know, the resources, mm -hmm. the, the medical treatment options, and, and point them in the right direction. And Rick, you must, you must see some of this stuff dealing with the youth as much as you do. What do you see if, it's, if you see something that seems a little bit off-center? How do you handle it from your side? You know, a lot of what we're doing is really based on the prevention model. Yep. Um, I'll be honest, uh, from what, what I see and the exposure that I have, um, I have not encountered um, young people in town yep. that have. Not that there aren't. I'm yep. just saying that, um, but if there's different signs that we see because a part of our job, and not only myself, but any of the folks who work with us doing our programming, is to observe. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to look, listen. Um, and if something doesn't seem right, what I have is this wonderful network of uh, people in my department that mm -hmm. I can um, go to, you know, Pat Meskel or, or Carol or any of the other, uh, Pam uh, Wasik, and just, you know, refer to them. And, uh, and who knows, there could already be something in place or something happening. A lot of it is, it's, it's like the cliche of if you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. It's just very important mm -hmm. to do that and, and to not be afraid. Uh, and when I speak with young people, um, we have this great program going on right now through Martin Kellogg Middle School uh, in the eighth grade health uh, classes. Once a month, uh, I get on the Google Hangouts. It's my, my new tech thing. And the class and I uh, talk back and forth, and the, um, the students have prepared questions about what resources do we have in town? What's, what, what is human services? What do you do? What's the, uh, you know, how, if I have a problem or if I know someone who has a problem, how do we access the kind of you know help that we sure. might need. It's been very successful and um, you know one of the things is it does is it's another way of just getting the word out there that you know you're not alone, mm -hmm. that there are people who want to listen um, and that really there is this wonderful you know potential mm -hmm. resource right here in Newington. And um, so I, I really think that what I hope is that the stage we're at with the prevention is that we're giving young people enough options to get mm -hmm. that exhilaration or that kind of excitement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and interaction so that it doesn't become the choice that they you know, choose at, at some point or that they know when they are faced with that choice that um, there's someone that they can you know, talk to. I think it's, it's really the most important thing that I've seen from programs like this, and I know Dr. Collins has said the same thing with the school system. It's like it's being able to talk about everything. You know, talk about and, and let people know that, that Newington is aware of the world around them. And it's not just, you know, we, we always hear a lot of the good things. We hear about the key club and we hear about the blue ribbons on the schools and all the wonderful things we get accomplished. But there's also, there's also the side of protecting our children. 
and being aware if there's a problem and un understanding that you know it's not everything's not always hunky dory yeah. and not being afraid to talk about it not putting our heads in the sand and that's the key and there's still unfortunately so so much shame around the disease of addiction mm -hmm. um, and that's you know part of it is just getting the awareness out that it is a disease mm -hmm. and what would be some of the warning flags that a parent should look for I in think a, a child? A, yeah, a change, you know, notable change in behavior, irritability, mm -hmm. yeah. um, not being able to concentrate, not being able to focus, forgetting, you know, papers at school and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. forth. Um, y y we know our children, and yeah. and we, I think, um, can recognize that being said, um, if you are struggling with the drug use, mm -hmm. folks get very good at hiding it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So um, sometimes you're going to find that out through a friend of your child's or your loved one's. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're not mm -hmm. going to find it out necessarily through through your loved one who's struggling. So this is a, a great opportunity for people to learn more. What's the date? Who's invited? What's going on? Where's it going to be? Yeah. So it's April 4th, Wednesday, April 4th, from 6 to 8 p.m. And we're doing it in the cooperation with um, the health department, the public schools, um, our youth adult council. Mm -hmm. And um, so it is at the high school in the event center. Where's the event center? Is that down where the um, industrial arts used to be and down that end there? Or where is the event center? Oh. You're smiling. That's a, because it's a good question. It is a good I question. I believe, and I, I do believe, because I... I, I, I can I promise there will be signage, but I could not direct you. <laughs> well, I do know there's still a lot they do over at the high school as far as they do some catering and things. There's a quite a bit, uh, there's a big area towards the back where the industrial arts area used to be. Culinary and I know one of the... Hmm? It's the culinary arts program. Yeah, yeah, and I know that in that particular area, there's a large room with some tables and things where right. that, I think we were talking about that. I don't know if that's the title of it or not, but I know that's one room. And because we're going to serve some refreshments there, We're right? going to serve some refreshments. Yeah. We're going to, you know, have um, adults and teens, so open to, to both. Okay. Um, and um, we're hoping that, that it becomes a comfortable environment to, mm. to learn this information and, and ask the questions that we all may have. Mm -hmm. And it's free, right? And it's free. Okay, good, good. Can't yeah. beat that. All right, so yeah. that's going to be Wednesday, April 4th, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the events area. And I'm sure they can call Human Services and find more they can. about that. And I know we got we got Rick's number, 665-8594. How about you? I'm 665-8660. And our main number is 665-8590. 8590. Now, if you, uh, is, um, the um, challenge course, do you have anything on Facebook about that that we can look at? You know, we have uh, talked, uh, we've gone back and forth, and one of the things that we realized is that Facebook probably wasn't a great platform for us. Really? Okay. Um, just in terms of the interaction piece of it. And okay. so um, we have had occasion where um, some parents uh, who are involved with, and I can't remember, uh, there's a Facebook page that, so parents can post some of the things or if they have comments or, or things that they want to say about. And the information right. that's shared that and way. That. Yeah. But, um, but on know. the website as well. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're working at becoming a little bit more active, uh, interactive and, and user friendly on the website as well with more. It's, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. All this stuff is, you know. Yeah. Where, now what's the website they go to, the Newington website? Yes. So yeah. if you go to the Newington website, you go to departments, Human Services, and um, we will have information What's there. What's our town website? NewingtonCT.gov, G-O-V. NewingtonCT. NewingtonCT.gov. Slash. No, I got it wrong. NewingtonCT.gov. No <laughs> go. go to up the top of the screen. There's something for it says departments. Click on that. Look for human services. Click on that. You're there. Well, before right. we That's before right. we let Thank before you. we let you go, it's, <laughs> it's important for uh, for everyone to know how do you keep the huh? I have one more thing I want oh, to share. Oh, how do you, how do you keep um, the mayor updated? Do you send him stuff on a regular basis or? They give me candy. That's what I was going <laughs> to say. We get visits. We have a candy jar. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> and he right comes by the by. candy jar. They have all these notes. <laughs> 
Um, Roy, I, Roy, do this. Roy, do this. Roy, do this before you eat any candy. Do, do they exactly. keep you in a loop with emails that are going on? Yeah, we, we, the I usually we run into them in the hallway or something yep, yep. like that, especially when I'm down there looking for candy. That's what it is. What have you got there? So I also wanted to share that we are doing a joint um, informational forum <laughs> with Rocky Hill as well on oh. March 26th. Okay. And um, at 5.30, there will be a Narcan training. Oh, yeah. um, awesome. And so that is at Rocky Hill High School, 50 Chapin Avenue in Rocky Hill. And, um, and what, what th day is that going to be on? That is a good question. <laughs> March 26th. Do we know what day that is? Yeah. Oh. What this. kind of day that is? Come on, get out your smartphones. Yeah, right. everybody pulls out their <laughs> smartphones. March 26, okay. <clears throat> Let's find out what that is, okay. And anybody who goes to that half hour training has the ability to receive a Narcan kit um, at the end of the training. Yeah. So it's, it's a good opportunity for someone who um, maybe works in the field and may be exposed to people who, who would be using drugs and may have an overdose or a family member or a loved one or, um, and so, you know, it's those, amazing. those kids I've will seen, be available I've seen and the training will be available. I've, I have seen it and, and you can go from somebody who's OD'd and they're just about dead and you apply that when they, when they have received that drug turns them around and yeah. like within moments they're back out, like goes out with the cruisers now incredible and you can right. get it for your home you yeah. can have exactly. it in your house you can you god forbid everybody should have it actually mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you don't know when something like that could happen. So that's going to be Rocky Hill High? Rocky Hill High School, 526, 530 for the Narcan training, followed by um, some additional information and a forum at okay. 6. All right. Sponsored by our state, Tony one of our Guerrera. state representatives, Tony Guerrero. Oh, Tony, Tony's a terrific guy. We're yeah. so fortunate to have, you know, having Tony and having Paul Doyle and having Gary doing so many great things. We got mm -hmm. some great representation at the... Uh, at the Capitol. All right, folks, thank you very much for thank coming you in. Thank you for having us. Appreciate having it. Us. Yes. And of course, running down from the Youth Adult Council, and uh, and we, uh, we're, it's amazing. I should have brought candy, right? <laughs> well, it is amazing. Be careful when you get up there. You are still wired, so you might want to, uh, yeah, you might, careful. they'll Just be in to get you. Don't worry about it. Okay. We'll let people come by, and uh, yeah. they'll be, can someone come in and rescue our guests, please, and, uh, and, and disconnect now? them, and, uh, Okay, question, the does the mayor go to go to, okay, hold on, uh, go, go, the, the, okay, all right, that, that sounds good, too. All right, if you want to come on in, thank you very much, uh, you two are wonderful, and I, again, thank you. special thank you thanks much. to Rick Huggard from the uh, Youth Program Coordinator uh, here in Newington, and also Carol Lebrecht, the Director of Human Services. Thank you so much for coming I'm, in. I'm looking for my notes on the fuel spill, mm -hmm. and uh, we had... We had hoped at this point to have the hole filled in. Okay. And all that. Uh, we missed that. I mean, weather's been a factor. Oh. And uh, finding. Well, boy, have they been doing find, a great find, job find, over there. Yeah, they, they've been Whew. going great guns. Uh, I think we're getting close to 9,000 tons of soil having been pulled out. Um, we, as far as cost, which is on everybody's mind. Yep, yep. Right now, we are up to just under $1.8 million. Um, is that better than we thought we would be, well, or how does we're, it... We're, we're not there yet. Okay. Um, we're looking, the initial estimate was, uh, worst case, $5 million. The council acted to authorize uh, short-term borrowing up okay. to $5 million. Okay, okay. And it doesn't mean we're going to run out and borrow five million, we're going to borrow what we need yeah, yep. uh, if we have to borrow. And um, if it goes above five million, we got to sit back and uh, do some more deliberation or some more uh, scratching for money. Mm -hmm. um, how does that, except when something like this happens, how does that just, not just from a financial standpoint, but from a timeline standpoint, how does this affect trying to move forward with what we're trying to do with the, with, with redoing the town hall, all that um, kind of thing? Well, it doesn't help. Okay. <laughs> that certainly doesn't. <laughs> that certainly doesn't help. Uh, on the other hand, the hidden blessing is once we get that area filled in and properly surfaced, 
we now have an area where the construction equipment can be staged. Oh, so when they're doing uh, that, yep. It, up until this happened, we were looking at ways to reconfigure the uh, lot between the town hall and the library and that town hall lot on Garfield Street yep. and how we could use, you know, leverage everything to, to store construction equipment, still allow access to the library. And it was a real problem. And, you know, so it's, it's the, the, the blessing in disguise, yep. really, that yep. this happened. That now we have a parking area. Yep. Yep. That doesn't mean to say we've turned our back on the library. Uh, there will be access maintained throughout the construction. Council just approved uh, an agreement with the library to build a parking lot for the library. Okay. It'll Great. be in that vacant land south of the library, yep. Yep. between the library building and uh, toward uh, Mill Pond Park. And uh, the, the, the street will be reconfigured a bit because the town hall lot, as it's known, that'll be fenced off for the construction. Oh, okay. Because right? that's where okay. the construction, the new, new town hall is going to yep. be in the existing parking lot. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where we are with that. Boy, i got to tell you, though, I've been really impressed, especially been watching a lot of this stuff over the last few days. And um, I went and I met... Um, I think it's Erin Simon down there at the uh, at the bus garage. She yeah. worked with Alan for a long yeah. time, and congratulations to Alan Avery for uh, for his retirement, yeah. which is wonderful. Yeah. And the drivers down there, and the fact that you know now that everything's had to be moved mm -hmm. over to the high school, yeah. and watching the orchestration of yeah. 60 buses oh, yeah. when you get hit with a snowstorm. Oh, yeah. Hats off to those because I went over and I watched. And they had to clean off all the, they had these long roof rakes yep. to clean off the roofs yeah. of the buses. Then they had to move them over. It was like, it was unbelievable. Yeah. They had to move from one side of the, of the parking lot at the high school to the other so they could go in there and plow yep. so they could move them back. It's, it's ours. And I will say that um, somehow through all of this stuff that's going on, mm. it's great to see the camaraderie and everybody oh, helping yeah. each other Everybody's out during this. Everybody's pulling together. Thank Talk you. about challenges, but yeah. hey, you know, that's that's what it is. And I do know also, if you know of anybody, they're looking for a few good bus drivers over there right yeah, now. They always are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, it's, 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 that's a tough job when you stop and think about well, it. Well, I, I, what it really is, too, and I know that um, they are helping uh, people get uh, the CDL or whatever yeah. that special they, license they need is. The special license. Yep, yeah, yeah, I know the yeah. town helps out with that. And, but like you're saying, I mean, oh my gosh, you're dealing with everything from kindergartners yep. all the way through, and then think about all the trips that are like the sports trips oh, yeah. at night, and man, oh man, and you know, my brother-in-law, Jack Morgan, he, yeah. he, he did it for a few years. That's right. He loved it, though. I yeah. mean, he really, uh, yeah. and he, you know, he, you can he, go. He really bought into it. I mean, before the school year started, he'd drive the route and talk to yep. the parents. Talk to the parents. And, and you know something, it, that's, that's a whole discussion that I, unless you've really sat in the shoes or talked to some of these mm -hmm. people. I mean, I can remember, I mean, you know, many, many mayors ago, back to mm -hmm. Jeff Wright, and, you know, he was saying, well, geez, I know we really need him. And I looked at him, I said, did you ever have a bus driver when you were a kid? Mm -hmm. No, I said, I mean, I knew Tony, I knew yeah. Bev. I, yeah. And there's, there's, um, I went out with, uh, I went out the first day of school so we could videotape some stuff and went on the bus ride. Uh. And saw the parents and how they loved the bus drivers and giving them cookies. <laughs> They're like members of the family. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it, it's, it's, um, when, you, when unless you get close to that stuff, you don't realize, you know, how fortunate. Uh, and, and again, during this, all the departments have, they've done a great job getting along. Mm. I mean, really, it is. And you as the mayor, yeah. you're the biggest traffic cop in the middle of <laughs> You're trying, always trying to bring on the peace. It gets yeah. a little tricky. Every, everybody's aiming for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's it. it. Now, what, are we, um, what have we, else have we got going on in town? Here we are in March. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day, yes. The, the, we just had the St. Patrick's Day parade. <gasps> Unfortunately, this year, Newington wasn't in. I, I don't know. You know what something? Happened. I'll tell you. And I, I will say, not that Fox 61 doesn't do a, you know, a great job, but I tell you something. When we used to do the parades here at NCTV, yeah. nobody covered that St. Patrick's Day parade like we did. Mm. And um, I mean, you, you know, even as, in, as I'm sure you've seen with the Memorial Day parade, yes. you know, this is what we do well. But boy, oh boy, the amount of work to do it. Oh, and I'm sure. surprised Newington wasn't in it. They weren't. Yeah. They were not. And see, I got there, but I got there at the end of it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, my. Um, 
my uh, my family, big time Irish, so everything's uh, a big party, you know. It's really, really. Well, but all, all I can say is that uh, an Armenian was mentioned in a uh, was an eighth century A.D. litany of saints from Ireland. So mm -hmm. that's my connection to St. Patrick's Day. Well, my connection <laughs> to St. Patrick's Day is my mom, God rest her soul, Patty Parker. Irish, so I'm half uh, Irish, and uh, between, and then my sister being, you know, marrying into the Morgans, we got a lot of Irish blood in our family, and it's my nephew Stephen, it's his favorite holiday of the year, he goes crazy for that. What else have we got going on? I, I, I see that they um, got another restaurant um, where um, Uncle Joe's was, now they've got some oh, Jamaican yes, place yes, there. Yes, Jamaican, uh, vegan, and gluten-free, I better stop looking like I'm Casually leaning back. Oh, I so, well, yeah, I get yelled you know. at you usually, and that's where that's when I miss you, Scott, because he's the one that's always yelling at me. Sit up, Steve. Gotta uh, sit up. Gotta sit up. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, getting ready. Uh huh. Uh, I think that's the newest one. Um, work, I believe, is going to begin if it hasn't already on tearing down. Which one was it? Ruby Tuesday. Uh, to, to become yes, Chick, Ruby, Chick, yeah. To become Chick Fil A. That should be great. Yeah. So they, I think they've gotten all their drive-through and parking issues resolved, so that that can go forward. And there's a new uh, a new comp a new um, um, development coming where the old Dunkin' Donuts was down yes. there by the Olympia yep. Diner. Yep. Yep. On the other side of that turn bike. Yeah. Yeah. And. Duncan is looking for another site okay. that would accommodate a drive-through yeah. on on that under the turnpike. Yep. So, so that's good too. Yeah, I think the thing is called batteries and something. I stopped to uh, look. Bulbs and batteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bulbs and batteries. Yeah, that that looks like it's going to be a fascinating place. I mean, they can make a store out of anything. Know, I know. There's a place in East Hartford that used to specialize in plastic bags. <laughs> Go figure. Bulbs that, and batteries. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. The uh, and. Uh, Next to King Donut in that plaza at the corner of Stoddard and Main. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mediterranean Market, I guess, is now opened. I haven't had a chance to get out there. Really? Yet. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm hoping it's filling the gap left by the departure of Syed's on Fen Road, the Mid Eastern okay. Market. I, yeah. But I haven't been there, so I got to And the Asian point. Market is still. Is they're, that... out, they're in Cromwell. They're what in... happened to the one down by Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, yeah, they're, what... well, they're moving to Cromwell. That, that building is going to become a medical office. Yeah. Wait a minute. The one that's down over yeah, the West Hill and Willow. Really, it's going to yeah. be a medical office. Yeah. yeah. This is how I have to find things out. You don't call. You don't write. I got to find out. <laughs> with everybody else. Got to find out on the streets. That's that's absolutely yeah. amazing. Amazing. So. Um, now, also, I think we have, um, and I probably should have had Bob Newbold on the phone, but don't we have the business showcase? We have that. I've got a note on that. Wait okay. a minute. Hang on. I will find it because that's coming up on, on April twenty-first. As a matter of fact. Maybe we get Bob in for uh, for the yeah, April Bob show. or Gail, uh, either yeah. one. Yep. Yeah, the business showcase. Here it is. It's the twenty sixth. Okay, of it's April. A, of April at the high school. They must still be doing booths, I would imagine. Yeah, if you want ten, to, ten to four p. Ten a.m. four p.m. Yeah. Taste of Newington uh, in the cafeteria, noon to two p.m. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's there, and if you're a business in town and it's you fair. want to set up, you contact Gail Whitney at the chamber office. 666-2089. Because I know sometimes it's close to my phone number and sometimes people are calling me looking for Gail. Or email her at office at newingtonchamber.com. Yep, they're right there by Wings on the yes, uh, center of right, town. Yes, right in the center of town. Mm -hmm. uh, the night before, same place, is the, what they call it the smooth schmooze smooth schmooze the smooth schmooze yes that used to be your nickname in high school uh, wasn't it no <laughs> no i can't tell you my nickname in high school i saw your leather jacket it's, it's, it's no longer <laughs> politically correct so. but the smooth uh, the smooth schmooze yeah it's uh, got a preview of the uh, business showcase it's got a jazz pianist hors d'oeuvres by the high school culinary class Special non-alcoholic drinks. Uh, there are tickets involved, and I don't see how much it costs, but I don't think it's that much. And that's running April 20th, 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. The smooth schmooze. Like Faith Middleton's food schmooze, only this is a smooth schmooze. 
smooth schmooze. Now, that is that the day before, you say? The night before, yeah. Friday, okay. Friday the 20th for the schmooze. And then 21st is the... A, 21st is the uh, expo and the... Uh, Taste of New England. But there's no booze at the schmooze, because no, then it would be no, the smooth, no, that, smooth that's booze. They, that, that's why they made a point of saying non alcoholic drinks. Smooth there. schmooze. I suppose you could sneak a flask in, but then, but then it would be the booze uh, schmooze, yeah, and then, then we'd have all kinds of problems over and, there. And then you'd get your name in the newspaper, <laughs> not in a good way. And I see that the center of town's got some great stuff going on. Yeah. With uh, Goldberger's, what is it, Five and Dime? Five and Dime, great place. Yeah. Great place. Uh, I, I plugged it uh, during my. Uh, state of the town, yep, especially yep. the Reuben. Uh, let's see, the Five and Dimes open six days a week, every day except Tuesday, uh -huh. 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. So you can get breakfast all day or nice. lunch all day. Nice. Again, I yeah. heartily recommend the Reuben. Mm -hmm. um, and that's right connected to Goldberger's? You got Goldberger's on one side and Five and Dime on the other. So really, you got the whole day covered with meals because really? you go to Five and Dime for breakfast. Lunch or go to Goldberger's for lunch mm -hmm. and dinner. Mm -hmm. Well, now uh, to just shift gears because I know it is a big question with everybody. Um, the the budget. Yeah, you know, the budget. Tomorrow night you're gonna let people tomorrow, come out tomorrow. and speak, right? Yes. Uh, tomorrow night is the public hearing on the town manager's proposed budget that starts at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, you get? It? Have you seen a sneak preview of this thing? Oh, we've already been working on okay. it. We, okay, okay. We, we, but yeah, yeah, it's one of those cases. Um, How are the sides getting along? The, the you left know, and the right. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, the Board of Education just did its budget presentation. I watched that, yeah. It was the most lucid budget presentation uh, to the town council by the board that I think I've ever seen. When you say lucid, you mean easy to understand? I mean, yes, easy to understand. Okay. Um, both bodies seem to be getting along well. We are talking with each other rather than at each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got, let's see, we've got a social media policy committee mm -hmm. being formed by the council. We're including a member of the Board of Education on that okay. Okay. so that uh, what Council adopts can be brought over to the Board of Education as well. So there's one policy townwide. Uh, what we're looking at is for elected and appointed officials, guidelines for them on social media. Mm -hmm. um, there are things that public officials shouldn't say. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it would either be unethical yeah, okay. or it might violate freedom of information, yeah, yeah. Uh, which, which is a very real issue. So that's why we want to get this, and, and it hasn't been done in Newington, so that's why we want to get things down in writing. Uh, that's one area. Another area is formation of a committee to examine uh, consolidation of services, uh, which has been talked about individual to individual, but now it's... For ages. That, yeah. Yeah, now really. Now it looks like it's going to happen, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or at least discussions are going to happen. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a promising sign as well. It could be we're seeing the beginning of a new era. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I, I tell you something. I certainly mm -hmm. hope so. All the everybody who does this stuff. I mean, no matter. I mean, sometimes it gets it gets a little bit. I don't know. Dirty putting it mildly sometimes here in town. But I will say um, for all these people mm. who put in the endless hours, as again. You know, our staff here, our, our volunteers, mm -hmm. when you look at, I, I watched, I don't know why, I just thought the pain would be great. I watched <laughs> when the Board of Ed was doing their budget, you know, line by line, and I mean, hours on end, you're going, God bless them. Yeah. And, and, and they all got along during it. Yeah. You know, and it's difficult because you're talking about some, you know, I mean, you're talking about the educational system in mm -hmm. town. That's certainly not easy. And uh, and I'm sure, you know, if you guys, if we can get the Board of Ed to get along with the town council yes. and everybody's communicating like that, should be great. Yeah. You think we're going to, uh, we, uh, how much of an increase are we looking for this year with the, uh, with the town budget? Town managers come in with an 8.1% mill rate increase to cover a 4% increase in appropriations. Meaning? Uh, meaning the grand list is flat. So we're not getting much there. State aid is being cut way back. Uh, 
those are the two big factors. Um, we're not, we don't have the, uh, I hate to call it the slush fund, the surplus to draw down from that we had drawn down from in Is previous Is that like the rainy day fund? Yeah, okay. in a sense. Okay. It's, it's our savings account. Mm -hmm. Past years, um, councils have drawn down two to two and a half million dollars. This year, we're only drawing down one million. Uh, we want to keep a balance in there that uh, equals 10% of our appropriation. That's what bond rating agencies look for. Mm -hmm. And we will be going out to get bond, uh, get a bond rating to get the bonding for the new town hall. So being careful that, um, you know, there, there are cost movers, there are negotiated contract rates. Mm -hmm. uh, MDC rates are going up 11%. Very interesting story there. I'm hoping some night we can get the MDC Consumer Council as a guest. Bring him in. And, uh, well, he's got a conflict with the first Monday of every month because that's when the district board meets. So Well, well if it's well, an important I mean, thing, we'll find a way to be yeah. flexible with it. Yeah. Sounds good yeah. to me. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give him a shout and see what happens. Yeah, check with the, with, the, with the crew over here. Yeah. David, they were wonderful tonight to move, uh, to move our live show from 7 to 8 o'clock, which yeah. helped out everybody. Absolutely. And I want to thank everybody for that. And, uh, again, um, Hats off to the to the crew here, and special Absolutely. thanks to you and the folks at the town council and everybody for uh, making uh, Channel 14 the Volunteer of the Year and all the work that they've done back there. I mean, it's just uh, amazing. We've been here for more years than I can count. 32, <laughs> 14. We go way back, and I'm you know I'm just the kind of guy when they said there was a camera in the center of town, I said. I'm going. But anyways, lots of mayors and lots of changes, and uh, we, I'm glad to see you sitting next to us again well, for your you. second term. Thank you. It's and, uh, uh, good to be here. And uh, and good to see you moving around there. I'm moving. Yeah. I'm moving. You show up everywhere. I think it's terrific. Hey, I got to. You know. Got, I know. There's Have canes will travel, whatever I you mean, need. Yeah. <laughs> and also, uh, thanks to Robert Blank, Robert J. Blank, Michael Delgado, Joe Trombetta, uh, Vicky There's Rosencrantz, Joe right over there. He's and all the, the, uh, the, the dancing Rosencrantz family, <laughs> John Donahue, yes. Abigail, Abby, show is ending. You want to come out and say hi before we go? It is St. Patrick's Day. Everybody always goes, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Ab Abby's sleeping in here. She's my little, you've seen her here on the show before. There we go. But she is, all um, right. she's our volunteer. You want to say hi? Okay. Hi. And he said, that's the mayor. Okay, everybody. Don't bite my fingers. I saw your name in there as Abigail. <laughs> and I said, Abigail Parker, is she related? Yeah, she's mine. All right, but thanks, everybody back there. Thank you for most, most here, of all here. for watching. And uh, we're going to do it again, I think, on April 2nd. April 2nd. was our next program. April 2nd. And in the meantime, uh, if you have any uh, questions or thoughts between now and then, you can send the mail uh, to uh, talk to the mayor at nctv.org. And we'd be uh, more than happy to address your stuff on the next program on April 2nd. That's Talk right. to the mayor at nctv.org. You're doing your office hours on Thursdays? That's right. From when to when? Uh, 9 to 10 at the Senior Center, 5.30 to 6.30 in my office. Any other places on the road? No. <laughs> but if you see me at the Stop and Shop or Best Market or Stop and chew your ear off. Steve's, you know, <laughs> say, say hello. Uh, well, it's okay. You, you're always approachable, and we appreciate you that. Betcha. And a special thanks to Human Services yes. and, the, and the gang for coming over, for both uh, Carol Lebrecht and for Rick uh, Huggard for uh, coming in and spending yeah. some time with us. And, uh, and again, if you have anything you'd like to see here or any guests you'd like to see, talk to the mayor at nctv.org. I'm Steve Parker. She's Abigail Parker. He's our mayor, Roy Zarr. A good being here. Don't forget, where's the camera? Don't forget, clear the hydrants. And clear your hydrants. Happy St. Patty's Day. And ha happy St. Patrick's Day, absolutely. May the luck we of the Irish forget that. be yes. with you. All right, he's Artarian, uh, that's Irish. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye bye.